Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Australian action horror movie called Wormwood Apocalypse. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. A few years ago, several meteors crashed on an Australian wasteland. While it didn't do much harm at first, soon the people started getting sick and killing each other. It turns out that the meteors brought with them a kind of heavily contagious virus that transforms humans into zombie-like creatures, except it is more dangerous because it spreads through the air as well. No human is immune to the virus, but the ones with blood type A negative can only be infected with a zombie's bite, and not through the air. At the beginning of the film, we are introduced to a girl named Brooke, who has recently turned into a zombie. She tries attacking her own people, but her brother Barry stops her. He gives her a vial of human blood, which turns her back to normal. It is then revealed that Brooke is a hybrid zombie who couldn't complete the full transformation when she was first infected. She manages to suppress her zombie urges most of the time, but when it gets out of control, she has to take human blood from the vial. Because she is a hybrid, she has special characteristics, like she can control fully turned zombies with her mind. Brooke's brother, Barry, on the other hand, has a negative blood type and hasn't been bitten yet, which makes him one of the few surviving humans. In the other part of the wasteland lives a former soldier named Reese. He has made the best out of his situation and is living in a protected bunker that runs on zombie blood. The zombies secrete a gas from their breath that is extremely flammable. This component is also found in their blood, which makes it act as fuel. Reese's day starts with him exercising and taking a strange yellow pill. Then he goes on a zombie hunt, which doesn't take long since the creatures are surrounding the fort at all times. He captures a few zombies and makes them components of his mechanical devices. When the creatures are bribed with meat, they move their hands and legs, which Reese uses to run the generators. He also practices fighting with the capture zombies to maintain his physical strength. One day, he finds a zombie hybrid driving his motorcycle near the fort. He takes the man down and threatens him with a gun. On finding out that the guy is a hybrid, Reese knocks him out and abducts him. After that, he brings the man to a lab set up by the government as the last resort to find a cure to the virus. The primary researcher is called the Spider, who does various experiments on the hybrids to hopefully find the cure someday. The lab is guarded by many soldiers to keep it safe from the enemies. Reese frequently brings hybrids to the lab to help the doctors since he also wants the world to go back to normal. In turn, he is given the yellow pill. They are used to make people temporarily immune to the virus. The pills are the only reason Reese hasn't been infected yet. That day, he is given a picture of two hybrid sisters as his next target. He thinks he is making a difference in the world by capturing the hybrids for a better purpose. Hence, he works hard to find his targets. Then, we are introduced to the hybrid sisters, Maxie and Grace. They are driving to a secret hideout. When Grace's zombie instinct takes over her body, making her aggressive, she tries to hold herself down but isn't successful. Maxie helps her sister at the right time by feeding her a vial of blood. Somewhere nearby, Reese is hiding in a field, waiting for the sisters. When they are close enough, he makes the first attack and flips their vehicle. Grace, who is not as injured as her sister, comes outside the car and fights Reese. They engage in an intense battle, but Reese, being a trained soldier, defeats Grace in the end. He doesn't care to check the car for the second sister and drives away with the first one. A while later, Maxie comes out and starts looking for Grace, only to find out that she has been kidnapped. Reese is driving Grace to the lab when she suddenly wakes up as a zombie. This multiplies her strength and makes her attacks more intense. She manages to trap Reese, but he convinces her to drink blood that gets her back to normal. In the lab, we see the spider use a hybrid zombie to make a cure that stops the transformation process temporarily. He injects the medicine into himself, but is caught by the colonel and a soldier in the process. They point their guns at him for misusing the government resources, but the colonel kills his own man before the spider is killed. It turns out that the spider and the colonel were bitten by zombies in the past, hence they have been using the hybrid's blood to make the medicine that slows the rate of transformation and keeps them alive. They are fooling everyone because the hybrids they capture are not being used for the cure but for their own good. As long as they capture more hybrids and take the antidote every day, they will not turn into zombies. The spider is also working on a side experiment, hidden from everyone else. A while later, Reese arrives at the lab and hands Grace over to the colonel before returning home. 
On the way, his car stops, and he has to use a zombie's blood to restart it. All this time, Maxie is watching him while staying hidden. When he is distracted, she jumps on the back of his car and tags along. On reaching home, Reese distracts the zombies with bright light and enters the bunker. At night, the lights turn off all of a sudden. Reese cautiously comes outside and restarts the generator, only to come face to face with Maxie. She doesn't give him time to react before knocking him out. When he wakes up the next morning, she threatens him to reveal where her sister is. With no way out, he agrees to bring her to the lab. On their drive there, Maxie finds a picture of herself and Grace and asks him what he does for a living. Reese vaguely tells her that he was ordered to bring them to the lab. He distracts her in the conversation and takes hold of the weapon. In the end, Maxie is tied to the seat and taken to the colonel where the soldiers forcefully take her in. The colonel and Reese get into a slight argument when he makes fun of Reese's late brother, who also used to be a soldier. The argument quickly turns into a fight, and Reese shoots the colonel and his soldiers. He runs away, but doesn't forget to take Maxie with him. They are followed by an injured colonel and the soldiers who use their weapons to bring him down. When Reese opens his eyes again, he finds himself hung on a tree. The colonel taunts him about his brother's death, who was burned alive by the enemy. The person who killed him was none other than Barry, the guy we saw at the beginning of the movie. Following that, Reese is left to the zombies. He tries his best to hold himself up on the tree, but it doesn't work for a long time. A zombie is seconds away from biting him when they suddenly freeze. A confused Reese looks ahead to see Brooke and her team in front of him. It is revealed that Maxie is also Brooke's friend. She brought them to save Reese since he saved her life earlier. They take him hostage yet again and ask him to reveal where Grace is. Reese refuses to say anything and recognizes Barry as the man who killed his brother. Brooke and the zombies attack the guy, leaving him no option but to cooperate. He tells them everything he knows about the colonel and the spider. He thinks they are doing a great job by looking for a cure, unaware that nothing of such sort is happening in the labs. A few hours later, the group breaks into the lab and finds decomposing zombie bodies. It is clear that the doctors are performing experiments on the zombies, but they cannot let them kill Grace. They also see the yellow pills being made out of the remains of the dead bodies. Inside a tank, Barry finds the corpse of the hybrid that Reese had brought to the lab. A lab worker reveals that all the hybrids are killed as part of the experiment. Their blood is used to make an anti-transformation serum for the colonel, while the remains are used to make the yellow pills. Reese is shocked because he was told that they were not being harmed. He realizes that he was being used and kills the worker in a fit of rage. After finding out the truth, Brooke controls a bunch of zombies and sends them into the lab to kill everyone. When the guards are killed, Maxie goes inside a capsule and is dropped into the bunker. She enters a vent and goes looking for her sister, while the others head inside through the front door to keep the colonel distracted. They kill everyone in their way while simultaneously walking towards the control room where the colonel and the spider are. Brooke eventually reaches the main room and finds the spider inside. He introduces his latest creation, the most dangerous cyborg zombie. Brooke sends her army of zombies towards the cyborg, but he is too strong for them. The spider is using his arms to control the zombie, which makes him even more dangerous. The real zombies are killed brutally by the cyborg, leaving only Brooke alive. In the end, he attacks her and throws her to the wall. Brooke cannot fight the powerful cyborg and can only hope for a miracle to save her. When he is seconds away from killing her, the said miracle happens and his hand stops working. This is because Grace, who is tied in a corner, is controlling the spider's hand and keeping it from moving. The mind control technique works on him because he is also half zombie, who has been delaying transformation using the hybrids. Brooke gets the upper hand and attacks the cyborg while the spider is busy with Grace, but soon he gets back to fighting stronger than before. Brooke is yet again in danger, but this time she electrocutes the cyborg and defeats him before he even makes an attack. Outside, Barry and Reese are fighting the colonel. Since he has a gun, he has an upper hand on both of them. He is seconds away from killing the two when Maxie arrives with her weapon pointed at him. She shoots him dead and saves the others. However, things go downhill when Brooke starts transforming into a zombie. She desperately needs a vial of blood, but no one has one. When things get out of control, she attacks Maxie and makes her hide inside a cage. A while later, Maxie finds a pouch of blood and feeds it to Brooke, finally calming her down. When she comes back to her senses, Brooke realizes that she bit her brother. At the same time, the spider gets Grace and flies out through the capsule. 
He also puts the lab in auto-blast mode. The group has 30 seconds before the entire lab blows up and kills all of them. Barry and Brooke decide to use their blood as fuel to send Reese and Maxie outside through the capsule and sacrifice their own lives. The plan works, and Reese and Maxie fly away seconds before the place explodes and kills Barry and Brooke. Outside, the spider is drawing Grace's blood for his antidote. Right then, an ally soldier finds out that the spider is also a zombie. With no colonel to tell him otherwise, they attack the spider. Annoyed by their involvement, the spider kills them both. When Reese and Maxie arrive at the hideout, Maxie finds her sister unconscious in bed. Reese confronts the spider and fights him, but since he has hybrid blood in his veins, he easily overpowers him. The man is seconds away from killing Reese when Grace wakes up and stabs him to death. She doesn't stop there and brutally tears his stomach open. In the last scene, Maxie gives Reese a yellow pill because he is about to transform. She asks him to join their team. The movie ends with a twist when we see Brooke and Barry come out of the remains of the lab unharmed. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.